Hey, this is Anna. Thank you for following. If you're new, please click share, like, and follow. If you're existing, welcome back. I welcome everybody, and I thank you for helping me get my message out there to really get everything, get tr tread and get traction going. Um, I need my link in as many places as possible, which means sharing, you picking your favorite video, sharing it to your favorite group, sharing it to your page, if you will. The more places I'm at, the higher up on the search engines and the more people who really need to see these videos are going to find it. But, and I, I do appreciate your help. I, I love you guys so much that you're helping my vision and my heart to get out there because what I'm doing is an extension of myself. If you're new or you haven't watched it, Tragedy Can Motivate You will tell you why. I want to talk to you today about merging lives. This has become so important in my mind because I'm currently working with my own boyfriend to try to merge our lives. And there are bumps along the way, okay? You're going for being, you're going for being single to a relationship. And it doesn't matter how long you were single, but you still, you could, gosh, I hope you don't jump from relationship to relationship, but if you're one of those people, you still need your time alone, whether you like it or not, your time with your loved one, your time with your friends by yourself, and then your times where you're merging together friends. Okay, this is all a process that takes quite some time and so easy to fall in love and forget all these steps and to forget to be an individual and lose yourself you have to be conscious and you have to step back and make sure you're giving your man your woman their space okay that's not to say that they should go weeks and weeks without seeing you that's just like no matter, like, what part of your relationship are you at, for instance, post it in the comments. It, it There is no defined time, but at least by three to four months, you should be definitely seeing them once or twice a week if you're moving slow. They should have their day to themselves. You have your day to yourself. You're together. You may not be ready at that time to merge friends. A lot of friends are always asking, when am I going to meet him? When am I going to meet her? It's whenever those that couple feels comfortable. Um, and let me tell you, it's you can be very friendly, you can be smart, you can be able to hold a conversation, but you're still going to be really nervous meeting their friends the first time. These are people who know your man or woman in-depthly and are making sure that their guy or girl, their friend, is in the right relationship. And sometimes they're a little overbearing. The first thing you need to work on in your relationship when you're merging lives is each other. Okay? You need setting those expectations, setting those boundaries, not rushing things, and, uh, and understanding at what stage you're at. Not only that, but understanding that there is no defined time limit. So all these people asking questions such as, well, how long before I should be in here? How long before we should be in that? How long? You know, it used to be most people would date a year, be engaged a year, get married the third year. Now people are taking longer. And I actually think it's good when people wait until they get older, you know, late. 20s and early 30s before they get married they've had time to themselves they've had time to experience life other people learn because even if you dated a lot when you were or even a little when you were a teenager the situation changes again when you become in your 20s early 30s then again in your 40s it's just an ever-changing landscape and you want to have experience before you settle down. You, so, the very first thing is allowing your love of your life to have their space. This is very hard to do and people automatically are together all the time. 
He needs to have his time to himself. You need to have your time to yourself. You need to have time with your friends. He needs to have time with his friends. And then there's the you two together and then you two together with your friends. This could take, gosh, it could take six months to a year before you meet each other's friends. Don't define it. Don't put pressure on yourself like that. As long as you are progressing forwards, even if it's slowly, you're doing fine. It's when the relationship gets stalled and you're not seeing that person for a period of time that you need to sit down and have a discussion about where it's headed. But you should have, as soon as you decided to get serious, you should have a basic discussion, okay? A lot of people, you have to understand, a lot of people have been single. And as we get older, I'm 49, we get set in our ways. We have to learn, especially if it's our first time of truly having that spiritual connection with someone. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry about that. It's a little bit unnerving, you know. So, you're used to doing things. Okay, I'm used to being stressed out. I go off by myself and do things. And I take my space. And I don't have to call anybody when I'm single. I don't have to think about anybody. But when you get into a relationship with someone, there's suddenly another person to think about. If you want the relationship to progress forwards, both parties have to be considerate of the other's time, space, and attention needs. And that's different for everybody too. So don't define that. Me personally, at the three to four month stage, I like to be seeing my man at least once a week. Um, by, I don't know, by six months to seven months, I like our friends like to meet our significant others, you know, and don't go bombarding them with you. If you've got a group of friends, great, but do not take your spouse into your group of friends like that because your group of friends can be hardcore protective of you and and your man or your woman does not need an interrogation okay so just like pick your closest friend and then slowly keep introducing them to one friend after another i mean i guess if they're ask them if they're okay with that too don't just like say oh we're gonna meet my friends today the person has to be ready for that but, like I said, there are certain things that um, should be discussed and certain expectations when you get serious with a person. And I want to, that's what we're learning today, how to grow successfully together. Okay, a very, very big thing about merging lives and being with someone. And often when you get ghosted or a relationship breaks up and you can't figure out why, this is why. Okay. Now I'm going to do a shout out to Jonathan Astley here because he sort of explained this. He's, he explained it very well. He's a, if you look him up on YouTube, he's a nice guy. He has very deep thoughts. He's sort of a, a life coach. Um, but so he sort of brought this up and I just wanted to take it a little further. Okay. This is the capacity. Men and women are different. Okay, men are more logical thinkers, they're more action oriented, um, they are driven by chemistry, if you know what I mean. Um, they have hearts and souls, but they don't deal as much in emotions as we do. So, this is a man, this is what his capacity is for emotions. This is a woman. Because we're designed, we're designed to be, we can handle a lot of emotional stuff. Uh, the healthy couple who talks, spends time together, openly grows together and makes the adjustments. Can you see that? I can't even, I can't even think you see that. Is, is way up here. Because they're helping each other out. The couple that is unhealthy, who doesn't talk, who doesn't communicate, one or both parties, they're, they're the broken one right here. 
Okay? You have got to learn to communicate. You've got to learn to be on the same page. You've, and it's okay if you're on different pages while you're growing together, as long as it's not extreme. You have got to learn, though, to be able to merge and get to this point where you're both working together. And guys, we don't want you to take on our emotional stresses, okay? First of all, when a woman looks like emotional and she looks like she's stressed out, I'm telling you right now, she's not asking you to take that on. Maybe she wants you to listen and give her a hug. But she she needs to solve that herself. Okay? And if you help each other, you know, if you get to your emotional limit and you open up to your woman, you're going to have this. You're going to be supporting each other. You're both going to feel better. But if one or both of you runs and hides, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get a broken relationship. Okay, when your man has, and it's not your fault if he decides to take on, of course he loves you, of course he wants to fix it. Men are fixers, but they can't, okay? They need to accept that they can't, and they need to learn to be able to listen without taking on emotional responsibility and trying to fix it, okay? They are who they are, we are who we are. And there are some guys... Who can take on more than others? Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying guys are emotionally immature. I'm just saying we're having the baby. We got, you know, emotions up the yin. We, we roll around emotions, you know. So we handle it better. Most of us handle it better. So all we want a guy to do is listen. We don't want you to take on our stresses. We want you to listen. And half the time, when a woman sounds emotional, she's just allowing her emotions to flow. She's not breaking down. Okay? We are emotional beings. That's what we do. So, I hope y'all saw that. And that's pretty, that's pretty important, guys. Don't take on a woman's emotional stresses. Women, don't throw it on him and make sure he knows you're fine. You'll handle it yourself, okay? But if if you are handling it yourself and he felt that he had to take it on and he just ghosts you for that, then he's not worth being with. Anyway, thank you so much for listening to that. That's, I just had to get that off my chest. Like I said, Jonathan Astley started that conversation. Great guy. Very, um, very deep. <laughs> he drinks sometimes while he's doing his show. That's fine. You know, he, he gets his point across. Uh, let me see. So what else do we need? How to successfully grow together. Taking your time. Open communication. Go to the How to Communicate video and watch it. Go to... My Alexa is, is like a ghost. I'm sorry. I had to stop that because I can't find the, the, the music turn on alarm. And she's been doing that. Weird. Anyway. So respect each other's boundaries. Respect each other's limits to a point. Okay, but if you're going to be with someone and you and you love them and you're going to end up together together, you're going to need to start working on those issues that you have emotionally where you have to be totally alone. I mean, good Lord, stress in your life could go on for a month or two at a time. That's that does not make for a relationship that's going to last if you never see her, you never talk to her, you never see him, you never talk to him. You have to be willing to open up inside. You have to be willing to work. I mean, she, she or he will be willing to wait and be patient. And also, you can't run. I'm a runner. You can't run. 
But again, like the Bible says, there are certain things that are deal breakers. Verbal, physical, mental abuse, substance abuse, cheating, all deal breakers. You don't have to put up with that. You don't have to be treated like crap. Okay? But you guys need to be opening up together. You know, most of the time it's very hard because men often think that women have enough on their plates and get protective and think it's going to burden them. And that's not how we're designed. We may look emotional. We are emotional. But we are emotionally aware. We have the ability it doesn't burden us to help you. That doesn't add to our stresses. Okay? So just remember that. That's part of merging lives together. Growing successfully together. You've got to spend time together. You've got to take time. You've got to openly discuss things. And you've got to merge your lives slowly in your time. Okay? Or no running away and no being all by yourself all the time. Because if you want the relationship, she or he's not going to be there when you come back if you just never see them. That's not what a relationship is about. A relationship is about merging lives together. And you can still have your space. You talk to that person. Okay, I need some space. He says, like, not breaking up space, but I'm really stressed. I need to go do this or do that. Whatever makes him or her feel better. Okay, maybe it's going to work out. Maybe it's hiking. Maybe it's motorcycle riding. Maybe it's bicycling. Let them go do that. As long as they come back and they spend regular time with you and they talk. And sometimes I'm telling you when you've been through a rough childhood, that's not easy. But that's what two people who love each other are all about. You're there to lift each other up. We see in you how wonderful you are. Okay? So, remember those things. And if you need to know what kind of a relationship you're in, if it has a future, see the love video. They're wonderful videos. I do them on the spot. I, for some reason, I'm going through college at public speaking. I tried to plan a speech. I, I get very nervous. So I just, I've always been a speaker right in the moment. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Remember to like, follow, and share. Again, we are on YouTube as well, but we are not promoting that because of what happened last time when we got shut down. See the love video for that information. If you don't know my story, tragedy can motivate you, but it's really important that we get some traction if we're going to make a thousand followers by the end of August. I don't want anybody in this world feeling alone like I did last year. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Bye.